Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some big FL Studio workflow improvements you can make, especially relating to the new release of FL Studio 20.1. If you've seen any of these before, you can check the description where I've left lots of timestamps. So if you've seen one, just skip over to the next section of the video because I absolutely don't want to waste your time. So let's get right into it. There's going to be four main workflow improvements in this video. And the first one is going to be about loading and linking an instrument. So FL Studio 20.1 brings us a completely brand new way to do this. Previously, you would have to load an instrument in the channel rack, manually send it to the mixer, name and color it, and then add a track on the playlist. And then each time you wanted to rename and recolor, resend it, you'd have to manually do this, which takes ages, but we all do it naturally. But the huge improvement to the workflow now is that if you want to load a, a plugin, I'm just going to press F8 to pull open the plugin picker, which will have all of your plugins. Say I want to load Harmless. I can just drag it and drop it straight onto the playlist or straight onto the mixer. When I drag it onto the playlist, what you'll see is, okay, firstly, the plugins opened up, so I'm going to close that. It's there. It's named it Harmless, and it's added in uh, a pattern for me already. If I go to the mixer, it's already sent it and named it and colored it on the mixer. However, it probably doesn't have the name you want. So in any location you rename it, say I want to call it synth and label it as green for some reason, it will automatically update on the playlist and in the channel rack. And if you rename it in the channel rack, maybe I want to actually if I just recolor it to purple, it's going to recolor everywhere else as well. Now, this is a huge workflow, but it's also an optional workflow. So there's this little icon here and if you right click anywhere in here you go to track mode and you can set it to an instrument audio or unassigned so if you don't want it to have that dynamic link just unassign it unlink it and now that's just going to be called track 2 and if I were to name this synth 3 for some reason you can see it it's not called synth 3 here it hasn't updated onto the mixer either so it's an optional workflow but that's something that's going to save me a huge amount of time to reassign it, all you have to do is right click again, go to track mode. As an instrument track, I go to use existing channel, then I navigate to the one that I had, and in this case it was synth, and now it's reloaded, which is fantastic. However, it goes a lot deeper than this. Now, usually to load a plugin, you have to go to the channel rack and load it from there. However, you can just go to the playlist and double click, and your plugin automatically opens on any track that's been assigned. And this is sort of a huge workflow because I find myself pressing F6 scrolling through the channel rack, finding the instrument I want to adjust, and then loading it up this way. But now you can just load it straight from the playlist. Furthermore, if I want to automate one of these parameters, say for instance, pluck, create automation clip, you'll notice that it's already added it just underneath here. Now it hasn't automatically colored it. I think that's just a bug. So all you have to do to automatically color it is right click, press auto name clips and it'll color it for you. It really is that simple. I've just thrown some headphones on because the next tip is to do with actually uh, mixing a little bit. So basically on the mixer, you might notice that I've got this view. It might be the same view you have on the mixer. What you can do is go to this drop down list and you can set the track inspector to be on the left hand side. So this is where the effects are, which is what I've done. And there's also a drop down menu just here. If I just move this into the screen, extra large or compact or wide so you can choose lots of different view modes for the mixer there's nothing too special there but on the extra large mode if you drag the mixer up just a little bit from the top you can see all of your effects chains here now now i'm just going to start playing some audio and show you why this extra large mode is so useful if i want to start mixing i don't have to select individual channels i can just get their effects straight here so if i want to open up the eq on the kick the eq on that guitar percussion and on the piano i just select it from the drop down menu and now i can adjust everything together and then to close those plugins all I have to do is reselect them on the mixer like this or just use the close button just there being able to see which effects at a glance are on and off can just save you an awful lot of hassle trying to click between your effects navigating over to the side loading them up one at a time sometimes just being able to see a shortened list of what's on and what isn't can really just speed up your workflow the third workflow tip is to use a template so this doesn't mean always load up with the same drums and the same sounds and make the same kind of song each time. But what it means is having some sort of production or mixing template that is ready to go so that you can just be maximally creative and not worry about all the naming, coloring, routing and whatnot. So this template that I'm using right now, you can download it in the description. There's a link to a video where I show how the template is set up and all the little ins and outs, but you can download it for free. There's no sign up or mailing list or anything like that. Just download it for free 
and it's got it comes loaded with loads of different drums loads of synths everything's named colored sent to the mixer just speeds up your workflow and it, it certainly for me it just lets me focus on the music and not worry about all the naming and coloring because the color scheme is already there and it's quite nice i think and the fourth workflow tip is to use groups so groups on the channel rack if i open up my channel rack by pressing f6 there's a lot of stuff in here and I'm sure you guys will be used to having hundreds and hundreds of plugins and samples in here. So what I do instead of scrolling for days is to create groups. So at the top here where it says all, you can just click it and you'll see that there's different groups here. You know, there's one, it pre-makes one for audio and one for automations, but you can create your own groups. So I've created a drum group here, specific just to the drums, one just for my sound effects, one just for the instruments. And the way that you create a group is really straightforward. So what you do is you just select an instrument by highlighting it here and the green will come up. You can hold shift and then just select more instruments as you go. So in this case, I've selected those four. Now I press Alt and G and this filter group name box comes up. Now I just type whatever I want. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it synths. Okay, simple. Now all I do is I press enter and now a new group has been created just with these synths. So if I go back to all, they're still in the all category but now if I highlight just my synths, they're all there, they're all straightforward and they're just right in front of me. And I know that sometimes when I, I print out audio or you know I'm, I'm trying to do some reverse reverb kind of techniques, I can just use the plugin picker here, but in large projects, I'm sure you guys know, you know, after you've printed out loads of samples and tested four million snares in the pursuit of the perfect snare sound, there are literally millions of samples there. Um, not quite, but you know what I mean. And sometimes just being able to recategorize them here as you go, it just clears your head and you don't have to worry about uh, deleting things that are, that are not important. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that helps you. I hope you have a great week, great holiday season, and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.